Hey, I can. Okay, there's your regions. These are well known, um, very useful things that basically map editors use. For example, in your Dota or something like that, you might recognize the game Dota. DOTA, Defense of the Ancients. It was good for a while and it got really tedious, but I'm not going to get into that quite now. You have Region 1, for example. You can create your units, you can create triggers basically. I can't show you the triggers or the data editor or any of that sort of neat stuff. Got the data editor, terrain editor, trigger editor, text editor, import editor, overview manager, and test document, which is basically test the game out. So, um, yeah, basically what I was getting at is basically you can, in the trigger editor, you would say, for example, region one, time elapsed 15 seconds. So that means 15 seconds have passed since the start of the game. Create, and then the trigger would be like event or whatever, and then action creates two marines in region one, center of Mar region one, facing northeast. So they would be facing up towards northeast. So after 15 seconds of the game, two units would be created, two marines. They'd spawn inside of this blue circle that we can see here. Blue circle? What the hell was that? Blue <laughs> square! Blimey. How the hell does that look like a circle? Anyway, and you might make um, another trigger that spawns off that one, basically. I mean, this might get too technical for you, even though I'm not saying it in a very technical manner, but I have done a bit of map making myself, and I do plan to do a lot of map making, create my own games and such, as well as just melee maps for Blizzard, which would be fantastic. But anyway, um, let's get back to the point. This would be Region 2, for example, and the trigger would then say, for example, two Marines have spawned in Region 1. Move, attack move two Marines from Region 1, to center of region 2 and those two marines would then walk up towards region 2 and so on and so on and so on so this is what regions are basically used for as well as many other things but they're fantastic things let's have a look at the cameras okay we've got a camera here I can create a camera that basically shows you the exact view so if I select view camera or move that over there view camera that's the angle you would be looking at but I'm not going to get into that because actually last time I tried to mess around with that and sort of make it flip over and zoom in and all of that I because I'm not very experienced with this I've basically spent about 15 to 20 minutes on this in total really um, I couldn't get it to go back so I'm not going to mess around with that too much so we've got a pathing thing here so you can select the pathing this is probably more to do with um, the AI you can paint the pathing somehow but um, there's a no fly zone so this is where it probably gets really technical for when you want to do loads of triggers for like a little scenario. You know those roads that I was showing you? Roads? Yeah, the roads. Well, for example, if you created a car that was to travel across the roads, you might want to create a path in for the car so it goes along the road appropriately rather than for some reason bugging out and going off the road and then driving through like forests and stuff like that. So I assume that's what the path in is going to be used for. We've got points here. I'm not exactly what sure this is for. You've got a start location. That's pretty obvious. Sound emitter. That might be obvious. And a 3D point. Whatever these are for, really. So I'm not worried about that. Now, what you can do is you can edit so much in this game. But I'm going to very quickly show you something. Let's me. You will still be seeing the green screen whilst I'm actually tinkering around with this. So um, I'll try not to be too long. But for example, I'm going to go and get myself a Banglin. And I'm going to sort the Banglin out. And uh, this is something that's so easy to show you. Because I mean, there's so many different things I can show you. Scaling and all that rubbish. Tell you what I'll do. Is, um... I... I'm, I'm just looking at so many different options here, that's why I sort of start to slow down. Let's just show you the speed. I'll show you that Banelin, at the moment, this Banelin moves at 2.5 speed. If I move him up to 10, okay, for example, so the Banelin moves at 10, we'll have uh, um, let's see, a Dark Templar move at 80 
and a Hellion move at 160, which is the highest speed that you can select. There's no higher than 160, whatever that means. But basically, if the Bayman's moving at 2.5, you can assume that 160 is pretty damn fast. So I could show you scaling and all that stuff. And if you want to see that, write it down in the comment. Feel free to, but I'm sort of running out of time here, so I'm going to try and stick to the basics. Did I disc? Yes, yes I did disc, so I'm going to go redo that now. But basically, if I ever try to switch over the main editing parts like terrain, or units, or doodads, or cameras, or regions, basically it's going to disconnect me and literally just fall apart. It doesn't just cut off my fraps, the whole thing just says it's not responding and cuts out. So that's either a problem on my end, or it's just Blizzard's editor just needs a lot more tweaking before it really goes live. Either way, let's get cracking, shall we? So let's create some flame mode. Let's create some Hellions. And let's create some Dark Templar. Now you can stare at those if you like, whilst I go and um, edit them again, because I have to redo everything, which is why it will probably look different every single time. Uh, the things I do for you, I. Alright, Banelin. So what was I saying? The Banelin moves at a speed of, if I can find it, 2.5. So we were going to... I've got an idea. Let's keep the Banelin at 2.5. Okay. So we can show how fast the Banelin normally moves, which is a pretty standard moving unit. You know, that sounds... They'll move about as fast as a Marine will move or whatever. So, speaking of which, let's select a Marine, and then make the Marine move at 10. So, that's what we were going to decide to do. So, the Banelin's going to move at its normal speed, 2.5. That's a natural mo movement speed. The Marine's going to be upgraded to a 10 speed. The Hellion, if I can find it, is going to be upgraded to the fastest possible speed which is pretty ridiculous, 160, and I was really glad, because trust me, you'll laugh when you see this, they move so stupidly fast. Really, really stupidly fast. I mean, I was really hoping, because in Warcraft 3 you could edit it so they move fast, but they're pretty damn limited. They won't move retardedly fast, but in this they move so fast you can barely even see it. So, um, and the Dark Templar I was going to put at 80. So, let's go back to this chuck a couple of marines in so before I start the game you've got Banelins moving at normal speed you've got marines moving at 10 speed which is basically four times faster than the normal normal speed of 2.5 and uh, Dark Templar is going to be moving at 80 and Hellions are going to be moving at 160 one thing I will point out is actually I'll just go and click on test document that might disconnect me again I'm not certain Um, I don't know if this is recording, but I'll just double tap it just in case.